because in this particular video what I plan to do is summarize everything we've learned in the previous videos related to this topic and also introduce a few new concepts such as work done by conservative forces and work done by non-conservative forces and also introduce an interesting term known as mechanical energy. So let's start with a revision. So we know that the total work done by a series of forces acting on a particular object, that is the total work, denoted as W total, is equal to the change in kinetic energy. The change in kinetic energy, denoted as that little triangle with Ke right here, where, where kinetic energy where kinetic energy has been defined to be equal to a half m times the magnitude of our velocity at any point squared. All right, and uh, you can see a previous video to see how I derived this particular formula. But another particular, uh, uh, but another really interesting uh, expression for work, which we calculated earlier, was the work done by the force due to gravity, which we calculated was work grav which is just the work done exclusively by gravity is equal to the negative change in what we call gravitational potential energy denoted as GPE or sometimes denoted as U where we defined gravitational potential energy GPE to be equal to MGY or sometimes equal to MGH depending on which textbooks you look at I'll just write that as MGH just there. All right, well, we also found out in another previous video that the work done by a spring, that is the work done by the force of the spring acting on a particular object, and I'll denote that as work spring, was also equal to the negative change in what we called, or what we defined, elastic energy. Elastic energy. Where, where elastic energy was defined to be equal to elastic energy was defined to be equal to a half times your spring constant times by the magnitude of your displacement from your equilibrium squared. All right. Well, now that we have a whole bunch of different expressions, including work, maybe there's a way we can tie them all together. Because at the moment, in the previous videos where I've derived these particular formulas, I've, 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 I haven't really connected them all together, and that's what this video is. Um, that's what the purpose of this video is. So, in order to do this, let's introduce a new concept called work done by conservative forces. So, let me just write that down here. So, something we call work done by conservative forces is the work done, work done that doesn't depend on the path taken, but rather a net difference in position. So in other words, and, and a good example of this is say, the work done by gravity, because if you recall from our gravity video, if you, if you have a, a ball right here, and then you throw it up and it could go under any type of path you wanted to, all that we need to know in order to work out the change in gravitational potential energy is the difference in height. In other words, the path is irrelevant. So the gravitational potential energy is a function of displacement only. And as a result, um, if it goes around something we call a closed path, in other words, it goes through any funky path, but if it, refers, if it goes back to its same initial position, no work has been done. So that's what we call work. Th this, is, this is what we call work done by a conservative force. So this is equivalent to work, which I'll call work conservative. Conservative. So if you can imagine an example of, of, conserv of, of work that's conservative is, so an example of, of these types of works would be the work done by gravity. The work done by gravity. And the work done by the spring, right? Because they're both um, dependent on displacement. And if you go back to their original position, uh, even after doing some funky path, they'll still have no, wor no work done. So this will be work done by spring. And the work done by gravity are both examples of work done by conservative forces. Now let's introduce 
work done by non-conservative forces. Well, it's the exact opposite, right? I won't bother writing out a definition, but it's essentially work that isn't conservative. So, for, so for example, this is these two are conserv work, These two fit in the definition of work done by conservative forces. But what fits in the definition of work that's done by non-conservative forces? Non-conservative. would be, for example, um, friction, right? So an example of a non-conservative force is friction. And, and I can give you a practical example too. Let's pretend we've got a block right here and we were to slide that block to the right, right? Say we were to slide that block to the right. The force um, due to friction is gonna be acting to the left, right? But if I were to then slide the block, so, so let's say the block ends up over here after a while. But say I were to then slide the block back to the left, Let's say I were to slide the block back to the left. And let me just fix up this graph right here. This is this block. So say I were to then slide the block back to the left. Friction is now acting to the right. So it's always going to be against my motion, right? As a result, this is a work done by a non-conservative force. Because if you return your block back to its initial position, there's still going to be a net amount of work done. I hope that makes sense. All right. Let's see if we can continue this a little bit further. Well, what is the total work done? Work, the total work done, the total work done is going to be simply the sum of the conser work done by conservative forces and the work done by everything else, which is the work done by non-conservative forces. I'll just write that as NC rather than having me write it out all, all, all again. All right. Well, this is a really interesting expression now because now we've got an expression relating total work to work done by conservative and non-conservative forces. All right. Well, as I discussed previously, um, in, in, in our particular case, two particular work, works done by conservative forces are work done by gravity and work done by the spring. So we can just equate that. We can write this as work done by gravity, which I'll write as work grav plus the work done by at the spring plus, and I'll just leave this as work done by non-conservative forces, although I could write it as work done by friction if that's the only non-conservative force we're interested in evaluating. And work total will stay where it is. All right. Well, remember, if we scroll up, we figured out that the total work done, well, let me scroll down a little bit, we figured out that the total work done is just equal to our change in kinetic energy. So let's sub that in. The total work done is just going to be equal to our change in kinetic energy. In other words, we can figure out the total work done by all the forces acting on an object just by knowing its speed at one point and its speed at another point. All right, so this is gonna be our change in kinetic energy. But we also found out that the work done by gravity is the negative change in gravitational potential energy minus the negative change of elastic energy. So let me draw arrows so I hope I'm not confusing you. This boiled down into these two. Right? We just we know that the that two particular conservative forces are gravity and, and, and the and the force due to a spring, so we can express the work done by conservative forces as these two right here. But we also know that work done by gravity is just the negative change in gravitational potential energy, and that's in a video I made before. And the work done by a spring is equal to the negative change in elastic energy. And I've done a video on that before. All right, and um, so the work done by non-conservative forces, let's just leave that as work non-conservative for now, is, is, is all gonna boil down to this equation right here. All right, well, let's say we wanted to bring these two terms these two terms over to the left hand side of our equation, we get a really interesting result. We get the change in kinetic energy, the change in kinetic energy plus the change in gravitational potential energy, gravitational potential energy plus the change in elastic energy is going to be equal to the work done by non conservative forces. Like, like like friction, for example. All right, well, this is a really interesting result here. If we choose to call the sum of our 
gravitational potential energy, our change in gravitational potential energy and the change in elastic energy, just the change in potential energy, because that's essentially what it is, because both of these are potential energy, then we can rewrite this entire expression as, and let me do it below, the change in kinetic energy plus the change in potential energy is going to be equal to the work done by non-conservative forces. All right. Now this is this is where it gets a little bit tricky. At the moment, we've just done a little bit of algebra and juggling a little bit. But let's see if we can simplify this a little bit further. Let's say we were to define the change in kinetic energy plus the change in potential energy as mechanical engine energy. So so in other words, we're defining we're defining mechanical energy, denoted as E, is just going to be the kinetic energy at one point plus the, pot plus the potential energy at another point, at, sorry, at that same point. All right, so as a result, the change in kinetic energy plus the change in potential energy is just going to be the change in mechanical energy right here. Consequently, we can now write that the change in mechanical energy is equal to the work done by non-conservative forces. And let me just write this down just to make it a little bit more clear. So we're defining this as mechanical energy. I'm going to write it down. Mechanical energy is denoted as E. All right, that's what that's what this term is. All right. Well, what do we notice if under the assumption that that non-conservative forces do no work, then mechanical energy is conserved. And I'll show you exactly what I mean. So if, if non-conservative forces do no work, if non-conservative forces do no work, in other words, if this term is equal to zero, then, then your change in mechanical energy is going to be equal to zero, right? And think about what that means. If your change in mechanical energy is equal to zero, that means that E2, your mechanical engineering at any arbitrary second state, minus your mechanical energy at any state, at any other state, is going to be equal to zero, which implies then that your mechanical energy at your second state is going to be equal to your mechanical energy at your first state. This is a huge thing, right? So under the assumption that work done by non-conservative forces equals to zero, then all the mechanical energy of a particular system will remain constant. It will be equal, right? Because like if you have a particular system, let's say a pendulum, right? Let's say we have a pendulum right here and, and it's swinging like that. Say it's swinging like in this motion. Under the assumption that there's no friction or any other non-conservative force acting on this pendulum, energy will slosh between kinetic energy and potential energy and it will go in that fashion indefinitely. So this just means that mechanical energy is a constant. It, it remains the same. And, and, and I, I can't really stress the importance of the beauty of this equation enough because what this really shows is if you can calculate the mechanical engineer energy of one particular point of a system, then you know the mechanical ener energy of that system at any other point as well assuming that the work done by non-conservative forces is equal to zero. So uh, let me just write last point down and we're done. Just to hammer it in a little bit stronger. Let me just write that down. If non-conservative forces do no work, then mechanical energy is conserved. That's huge. All right, guys, that's, this is the end of our series of videos. We've done all the theory we need to. Now I'm going to show you how we can use this particular remarkable result to solve really, really basic dynamics and statics problems.